Hello everyone, Richard here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install the third-party firmware from dd-wrt.com on a TP-Link WR940N router. I've been getting asked a lot about this firmware, so today I'm going to show you how to download it, install it, and configure it on this router. To begin the process of installing dd-wrt, we got to go get the firmware. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So open up a browser and then type into the address bar dd-wrt.com. Go to the dd-wrt.com website. And uh, since we're doing this for the TP-Link WR940N, then we're going to go find the firmware for that one. And mine is a version 3. And only get your version number from the bottom of the router. So look on the bottom of the router, look at the sticker, see what it says, all right? If it says V3 or V.32 or, V.3 or as long as whatever uh, number is after the V, that is a version you have. So if it's a V4.5, then the version is a version 4, okay? The 0.5 doesn't matter, all right? So here we're going to go to uh, downloads and uh, right here at the top you'll see a tab. Now, you can search the database and use the standard uh, release, but I always go to the other downloads uh, link right here. And I download the latest beta. So I go to the betas. And then if you scroll down to, to 2019, you'll see all the latest uh, betas. These are all directories of, of uh, firmware for all the DDWRT uh, types. So we're going to go to the 39... Uh, 081 and then you get a listing of all these routers uh, easiest way and I'm just going to hit okay to this here the cookie policy thing uh, easiest way to find it is just hit control F on your keyboard to find and then just put a 940 right there's my version it, it, oh, it goes right to it you see that it have a TP link TLWR 940 ND version 3 so uh, choose any which, which one that you have corresponding to your uh, router, but make sure you get the right one. Remember, here's a 941, right? This is not a 941. This is a 940, right? So make sure you get the right one for your router. Can't stress that enough. Right version, right model number for your router. Do this wrong and you're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, I may make a video on how to recover from a bad flash. Uh, on this router, but I'd rather not have to do that uh, But because there's always a chance I won't be able to so uh, I risk when I when I make videos like that So uh, I here I'm choosing this router the TP-Link WR uh, 940 N D version 3 that's what I have and here we're going to go to uh, Download one of these two files you, uh, you have to get both files by the way both files are required to do this. So we're going to get the factory to DDWRT bin file. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it in my w, DD-WRT uh, WR940N folder. And uh, we know that it is a... Uh, I'm going to create a new folder so I know exactly where it is and what revision I do. So you can see that this is a new revision here. Uh, it is a R... The revision number that I'm going to be flashing into this thing is R9081. Now the beta firmwares are updated regularly, like weekly sometimes. And so, you know, you can always come back here and get the latest beta uh, firmware. Uh, you know, basically they're, they're bug fixes and security patches and so on. And, uh, you know, you, if you update them on a regular basis, you stay up to date with those, those fixes. So uh, R39081. Nine is the current latest ver beta version. There'll be another one next week. So I'll just hit enter here, open that folder up, dump that file in there. The next thing we got to get is the second one, uh, the web flash bin. So it's a two stage process with the TP Link router. So you have to do the factory to DDWRT bin first and the TL WR940NDV3 web flash second. So we've got them both downloaded here. Pretty sure, let's see. Yep. So at this point, we're ready to go. Now, your router should be uh, hard or wired to your, to your computer to do this. Never, ever, ever flash a router, ever, even stock firmware, 
through Wi-Fi. Always hard uh, wired in uh, or hard connected with a, a LAN cable. And I'll show you how to do that next. What I'm going to do is, is uh, use just the patch cable. And this patch cable is a LAN cable that came with the actual router itself. And uh, we're going to plug it in and uh, physically connect it to my laptop. So what the ports we're going to use to connect to are any of the orange ports or the LAN ports or Ethernet ports as they call them. And uh, pick the one you want. It doesn't matter which one you pick, just as long as it's in the orange ports. Then the other side of the cable, we're going to plug into the uh, LAN port on this laptop. If you have a computer, choose the, the LAN port on the computer. Either way, uh, you're going to physically connect to the router uh, this way. So again, cable to the LAN ports and on the LAN port on your computer. So the first thing we're going to do here is turn off the Wi-Fi. You don't want Wi-Fi on when you're doing this. You only want to be connected with a hard cable to the router. That's it. So we're going to go over here to the Wi-Fi icon and just turn, click on the blue Wi-Fi uh, button, turn it off. There we go. Uh, next, we're going to turn on the router and you'll see your network icon will start changing in uh, states here in a second. There it is right there. Um, we're going to right click that and we're going to choose open network and internet, internet settings and click on that. Then we're going to need to change, go to network and sharing center. It's right there. Then we're going to go to change adapter settings. And you can see that my Wi-Fi is not connected and that ethernet is still identifying. So it's actually still connecting. So right click it. And we're going to choose status once it's done identifying. It should tell us something here. Let's go. So right click it, choose status. And then let's go to details. And we have all this IP information. Now what we need out of here is the default gateway. The default gateway is generally the IP address of your router. If you already knew it, well that's great. But if you didn't know it, that's what it is. The default gateway is usually the IP address of your router. What we're going to do with that information, in my case, is 192.168.0.1. Again, this is for a TP-Link router, WR940N. So, you know, uh, yours may be different, but make sure that we're dealing with TP-Link because that's what we're dealing with as far as the video goes. So right-click, uh, so, sorry, let's go to a, a browser window. And in here, we're going to put in that number, 192.168.0.1. Now in my case, and there we are, TP-Link wireless router. This is the home page or the configuration page for the router. Uh, in my case, I reset the router to factory defaults. So uh, the default username and password will be the TP-Link username and password, what you would get when you first took the box, uh, sorry, the, the router out of the box. So here we're gonna type in uh, admin, and then for the password, same thing again, lowercase admin, and log in. Now, this is the first thing you should change on the router as soon as you take it out of the box, plug it in and come to this page. First thing you should do is go to System Tools over here and change the, the uh, password. Now, because this router is not connected to anything and we're just about to wipe all this firmware out anyway, there's no real reason to change the password. We'll just leave it on a minute and min for now. But if you ever revert the stock back to stock, make sure you change this password right away because otherwise you're vulnerable. Uh, the other thing, the factory defaults is if you want to set, set it back to factory defaults, which you should before you do this firmware upgrade, I find it just goes better. Go here to factory defaults, click restore, and then it'll ask you, do you, are you sure you want to do this? It's going to wipe out all your settings. You say, okay, and it's going to be gone. Now, before you do that, okay, you may want to, you know, save all your configuration so that you don't have to re-enter your Wi-Fi stuff and all that stuff. If you ever revert back to the stock firmware. And the where you go to do that is here in Backup and Restore. So click on Backup and Restore, and here you click on Backup, and it will give you a file called a binary file, a config bin, and that is a configuration file that uh, stores all the settings of your router currently. And you can save that and put it away, and when you, you know, if you revert back to this, this, this stock firmware, all you gotta do is restore this file and it will reset your router back to the day that you saved this file. So you may wanna do that as well. So a couple house cleaning things there for you. I don't need to do any of those things. At this point, what we're gonna do is the firmware upgrade, which is under system tools, firmware upgrade. Now we go here to, to choose uh, a browse file and 
We're going to browse it. And, you know, mine defaults to where I last left, last left it. But uh, uh, the folder that I put it in was the R398081. Wherever you put the, the two files, go there. So we're going to go to the factory DDWRT bin file and hit open. And I don't know if all TP-Link routers will give you the 18.005 error, but this one did last time I did it. Maybe they fixed it with this uh, uh, firmware update. I have never put this one in before, uh, or maybe they didn't. But I'll, if it does happen, I'll show you how to handle it here. I did create an entire video on how to do that, and I put a card for that up here. And how to fix this, the 18.0085 error, but I'll show you here anyway if it happens. So here I'm going to hit upgrade. You sure you want to upgrade? Yes. Ah, there it is. Error code 18005. All right. Well, uh, let's get to fixing that on this router. All right. So I've got, a, I've got the fix here on my desktop. I minimize all this stuff or just get rid of it. And it's pretty straightforward. And I'll put a link to these, the, this script in the video description below for you. And here it is. Okay, so what, we're, what I'm going to do is open up that browser again, uh, minimize it a little bit, get it out of the way so I can see both things at one time. There we go. And as you can see, I have the instructions here on how to do this. We're going to go to the wireless tab. And then here, in the wireless network name, uh, I'm just going to wipe that out, delete it. And uh, let me move this over a little bit. Okay, so what we got to do is copy each one of these uh, eight lines, I believe, one, two, three, four, yes, eight lines into the wireless network name field and save them. So I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to highlight it all and then right click it and hit copy. Now in the, in the browser uh, field for the router, you can't right click and hit paste, but you can do a control V. So wipe everything out of the wireless network field so that it's, so that it's clear and then control V with your keyboard and it pastes that uh, uh, that uh, line in there. We're going to hit save here. And you can see that the router is doing something at the bottom. We're waiting for it. Okay, it took the file. It took the, the line. Once that happens, we go and do it again for every single line here. And copy everything on the line. You know, everything. Everything you see, copy it. So highlight it all. And you can only do one line at a time. So uh, highlight it all. Right click it. Copy it. And let's go back over here and do this again. Delete everything in that box, control V, and save it again, wait. Okay, you saw how that happened. It takes a little second. Again, do it again, highlight it all, copy it, highlight that line, delete it, control V it in, save, wait for that to process, there we go. Then we go to the next line, Right click it, copy it, control V it, or actually delete it all if you wish. That's probably the safest way, so there's nothing left behind. Control V it, save it, and we just keep going like that. Highlight it all, delete it, control V, save it. It's a little tedious, but it's it's Pretty simple to do, and like I said, I'll put the script in the video description below. Highlight it all, copy it, control V it, save it, and third line. We're actually writing a program in this in this router, actually. Um, so highlight it all, copy it again, delete the field, control V, save. Now, when you put the third line in. The third line will actually run that little script, okay? And that, at that point, the router will reboot. You won't really see much happening, but uh, it will do it. And so, if, if, and this is what should happen after you do that. So, I'm going to copy this, highlight this again, delete it, control shift, right? Now, at this point, when I save it, like I said, it's going to reboot, but it's going to be almost like a silent reboot. So, I'm going to hit save. And I'm watching my router here to see it do it. Yep, I saw the light. All that will happen is your Ethernet light will flash on and off. That's it. And now we're waiting and nothing's happening. All right. 
Okay, and I just saw the Ethernet light flash again. So what I'm going to do at this point is just hit refresh here. And look at that. We should have just gotten back to the same page, but no, it kicked us out because it, it reprogrammed it. So here we're going to type in admin ag again, lowercase everything, admin again for the password. And we're back in to the quick setup, which we're going to skip. We're going to go to system tools, firmware upgrade. And here we're going to choose the file again. We should be in the right folder, 39081. Yes, again, those numbers will change. We're going to choose the factory to DDWRT bin, hit open, and then we're going to hit upgrade. Are you sure you want to upgrade to the firmware? Yes. And this time, no error. We're, we're going in all the way. Isn't that nice? Okay, so we're going to wait till this goes all the way through. Uh, it should reboot on its own. But one of the things that uh, the DDWRT uh, uh, firmware will do is change the IP address of this router from 192.168 to something else. So I'll show you how to get that information again. It's the same procedure that we did last time. We're going to right click the uh, network icon down here. Uh, open network and internet sharing. And, and you know, I, I'm watching my router. It's rebooting. Um, and if you, we go back, you'll see here that it's, it's saying unable to connect because it changed the IP address. It's no longer at this address, okay? So I'll minimize this. Uh, Right-click the network icon. Choose open network and internet settings. We're here. Uh, network sharing center. Change adapter settings. And then Ethernet, right? So right-click that. Choose status. Details and the default gateway now tells you the new IP address of your router, which is 192.168.1.1. Okay, I just wanted to show you how to get that and that it does change. So here in the, in the browser window, we're going to type in 192.168.1.1. Enter. And I wish all routers did this when you first turned them on. It asks you to change the router username and password because that is the first thing you should do with any router when you take it out of the box and plug it in. So you don't use the default password that you know, Netgear or TP-Link gives you. So here, just put in a username, whatever you want it to be. Here, put whatever password you want uh, to use. Just remember to remember it because you're going to need it to come back in. And then here, we're going to hit change password. And ta-da, we're back into the router, okay? Now, we're not done yet. Remember, there was two files. So we have to go back to administration again. And then it asks you for the username and password because it's saying, hey, Password and username has changed. So here, just put it in again. Now, it won't do this again next time you log in. It's only when you change the password. So put it in. And we're back to administration. We're going to go to firmware upgrade. And we're going to finish this by hitting browse. Right? And under the 39801, we're going to use the web flash bin file and hit open on that. So we did the factory to DDWRT. Now we're going to do the uh, web flash bin, two-stage process. Upgrade, and it's going to go through its process of upgrading the, the router. You'll see the lights flashing on the router, and when it's done, it will reboot and should bring you back to your home page of 192.168.1.1, in which case we'll continue on when that happens. Upgrade successful, unit rebooting. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, we've successfully upgraded the router's firmware to the DD-WRT firmware. At this point, I'm going to go back here. Yeah, it's timed out, but no big deal. Just go to back to 192.168.1.1, and it will give you... Come on, there we go. And we're back to the uh, web page. Now, one of the things I don't like here is this. I haven't logged into the router yet, yet it's showing me all this information. So this is one of the first things I can figure on a DDWRT uh, installation. I don't like that it's sharing data without a password, okay? So here we're gonna go to administration and 
Uh, actually, it still logged, has me logged in. So what I'm going to do here, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go here to, actually, let's go, yeah, we're in administration. What I want to do here is put the info site protection and click on that, okay? I'll, I'll show you why. I'm not, I'm not going to enable this feature, but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to close it out, open it up again, a private window, so it shouldn't have cached the, the credentials. So here we're going to go 192.168.1.1. .1 and see, it's still sh sharing out this information. It's saying the firmware, it's saying what it is. I don't like that. I I'd rather it say log in first. Okay, so uh, let's go to administration. Yes, and that's what should happen. But I want, okay, this is what I'm getting at. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So first setting I set right off the bat is up here on administration. Info site password protection, okay? And hit apply on that. Actually save first. That saves the settings so that every time it reboots, it stays. And then hit apply. Okay, and I'll show you what difference that makes. We'll do that again. Now, the less you show somebody on the internet, the better. That's basically how it works. Okay, 192.168. Dot one, dot one. And it shows you nothing except, hey, uh, wants to log, something wants you to log in. Exactly. I like that better, right? Less information, the less to go on. The less likely that someone's going to say, oh, that's the DDWRT. I know what the vulnerability is. Go, off we go. doesn't show any of this. I like that. So first setting, administration, check that off. Info site, uh, password protection. Save it and apply it. Always save and apply, okay? Next setup. Let's go to setup. See how this is all set up. Now, by default, automatic configuration DHCP is what cable modems usually use. Uh, if you have a DSL modem still, uh, you may want to go to the setting of PPOE, but I'm not going to get into those settings right at this moment. I'm just going to say that you have a cable modem and you connected it automatically. Uh, if you have DSL, you would probably go to PPOE, but consult with your uh, internet provider as to what those settings are going to be. So here, the next thing I would change, right there. Don't, give a, don't tell a hacker what firmware you're running. So here, just call it something else. Call it, uh, oh, in my case, I'm just going to call it my router, right? Uh, again, these settings are up to you. Uh, you see all the default settings here. Uh, other than that, you may want to change the time zone. Not really necessary, but anytime you change something, save the setting, apply the setting. Okay? And the last thing I think you should really go into uh, is the wireless configuration. Now here, you can change it to whatever you want, uh, but generally you can fool around with the uh, channel width. Uh, but 40 is the fastest, but the least compatible. In other words, uh, devices that can't do 40 megahertz won't be able to connect to this router if you set it to that. Uh, 2040 is, is pretty compatible and pretty fast. So, I, you know, it's up to you how you set it. Uh, generally, I leave mine at 40 because I don't have any uh, uh, configuration issues, but you play with these settings, you set them to what you want. That doesn't have any real uh, uh, security implication, has a implication of whether uh, a compatibility uh, implication. Next, uh, wireless channel. Well, choose one that uh, you know won't conflict with another device that you have. So if you have another router and it's on channel 1, this one should be on channel 6, and the next one should be on channel, channel 11. And the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, 1, 6, and 11 are the safest bets, as long as nothing else is on those channels. Okay, uh, wireless network name. Again, change this to something else. Um, what do you want to call it? Um, let's call it uh, primary router. Okay, and wireless SSID broadcast, I always leave it on, makes it easier to uh, configure. Uh, not, there's really no advantage to disable it. It can be sniffed out either way, so just leave it on. And then there's advanced settings for the real hackers, but I'm not going to get into that and check that. So we've changed those settings. What do we do? We hit save, and then we hit apply. Now the next thing you need, need, need to do and this is something I don't like about the way DDWRT does stuff, but the wireless security, it's disabled. 
So somebody right now could log into this router because it doesn't have any uh, uh, encryption or, or uh, security on the wireless. So we're going to change this right away and we're going to change it to WPA. Never use WEP. Never ever use WEP. WPA. And then we're going to go to uh, WPA2 personal. That's what I uh, um, prefer. And AES. It's up to you which one you choose, but those two are the ones I use and they work great. Here we're going to hit save. Once you do that, we're not ready to apply yet. Put in a password in here, whatever you want it to be. Um, I'll put what I usually use in here. And if you want to see it, click the unmask. I'm not going to do that. Uh, just put it in there. Again, save it and apply it. Now, if you don't save and apply and just apply the setting, if you reboot the router, you lose the setting. All right? So save and apply every time. Okay, now at this point, I should have a, um, well, let's turn the Wi-Fi back on. So there we are, and we see a primary router uh, icon, well, connection here. We're going to click on that and hit connect. And as it should, it's asking us for a password. So you put in what you put in that password field and hit next. Up to you which way you want to go. Uh, I recommend no in most most cases, but this is uh, at home, so I'm going to say yes here. Connected and secured. Now this router is not connected to the internet, so it's not going to give me an internet connection right now, right? So it says no internet up here. So at this point, uh, you know, you plug in your plug the router a WAN port into the uh, router into into your home router, and you should be off to the races. I'll do that right now. There we go. And that should quickly give me an internet, internet access uh, on this icon. Connected, secured. Once it figures it out, or it should be on the internet. Now, um, I'm still physically uh, connected to the, to the computer with a, 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 a network cable. So let's go take that off here. Let's go back to... Uh, Network and sharing here, boom. And you can see that it's still connected because it says Ethernet. So I'm going to disconnect that from the, my laptop. So I'm only connected through wireless. There we go. And you can see network cable unplugged. And I'm still on the primary router on Wi-Fi. And uh, it says connected and secured and doesn't complain about not having Internet. So that at this point, I should be on the Internet. Uh, I can verify that by going to Google here. And boom, we're in Google. So now I'm, I'm, I'm surfing with this on uh, uh, DDWRT. Now one more thing I'm going to show you here under administration is the backup feature. Same as your stock router, it can actually allow you to you know, save a configuration file for later. So say you set this up and you have everything set up like I do right now with Wi-Fi and everything working and you want to save that for later so that in case that you want to play with this and change the settings, you can always restore that file back. So all you have to do is just hit back up here. It gives you a, same as the stock firmware, it gives you a config file you can save, save it uh, wherever you wish and then whenever you change all the settings, if you want to restore it back to today or to right now, you just restore that, that file by hitting restore, choosing the file, and going uh, along. But first, you've got to choose it, of course. You've got to choose where the file is and then restore it. I'm not going to do that right now. There's one right there. But uh, again, uh, this is all uh, part of the power of this uh, DDWRT. Uh, DDWRT gives you a lot more flexibility and options than usually stock firmware does. So uh, that's it for my video on upgrading this to DDWRT. As you can see, it's working great. Uh, and uh, again, all, all the links for all the scripts and, and the hardware and stuff will be in the video description below. And, uh, you know, if you need any, if you have any questions or uh, comments or suggestions, comment section too. I, I, I go there regularly and answer them. That's it for my video on installing the third-party firmware from dd-wrt.com on a TP-Link WR940N router. If you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a huge favor. Click on the like button in the bottom right-hand corner and give me a big thumbs up. 
That helps my channel, that helps my video, and I greatly appreciate it. Also up here, you'll see a picture of me. That is the subscription link. If you click on that link, you'll be subscribed to my channel. As part of the process of subscribing to my channel, you'll see a bell icon. Click on the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I put up a new video and then you can watch it at your own leisure. Once again, and like always, I want to thank you for watching and for your time.